Well, hey there, YouTube. It's Petey Two Finger. I'm here in the kitchen, and I thought before we before we get right into it, do you do you have to say that to be on YouTube? I think you do. Before we get right into it, I will show you some of my favorite tools. So this is a side cutter. It's a snips, and I like this one because when I use my smaller ones, I'm like, oh no, it's gonna break it, you know. And then whoa, this guy comes in to save the day. Uh, this is a little screwdriver when they have this thing on the end like that. And then you can go like professional. Put your finger up there. You know you're doing a good job. You make a little mess. Oh, never fear. Sweepy, sweep, sweepy broom fun for kids is here. This is fun for children of all ages. And this is a cutty buddy. Once you've mastered the of the cutty buddy then you know you have arrived. This is a nice one. That This is that screwdriver. Hey honey, could you get me that screwdriver? And then my knife, of course. Can't forget my knife. This has got a thick carpet cutter blade, not messing around. And it comes in a handy dandy leather pouch. You put your weed in there. Uh, this one we found recently, this is, they call that alignments player, and they, uh, we found this in the Walmart parking lot. Which I found my drug scale at the Walmart parking lot, and a few other things, like you'll find stuff in Walmart parking lot. This was covered in rust, and I, I did a vinegar where you soak it in a, ba a bag with uh, baking soda, maybe? I don't know, and then, and then I sanded it. And put these uh, uh, shrink, heat shrink tubing on there. But this, I really like this. I really like when you got this in your hand. People are going to generally agree with you when you pack on one of these. This again, I brought this up I, countless, countless times. My German scissors. These I got in a little. They were in a little box. Uh, and it said scissors, fifty cents. And this was in there. Uh, these German scissors are round at the tip, so like if I got to cut a band-aid off, it, it doesn't hurt when you go in there. And they just, uh, they're, they're, they're German scissors, I mean, what more do you need to say? Uh, these, uh, if you don't have a Play-Doh model 170 shears, you don't know what you're missing. These things are like two bucks, and it's a, a good amount of fun on a Saturday night. Uh, we'll get into this later. This is a, a neat little guy. Uh, and if you can see the difference, like who's in here, no one, who's in here, a little guy. Uh, that'll, come, that'll come up later. The solder is not one of my favorite tools, but uh, oh, nonetheless. Now, as far as finding things and then cleaning them up, this was another one that was horrid. And I actually painted that. Uh, I, I put primer on it, I think, first. Or maybe that I just shoot it red. It was it was red initially, and I I cleaned this up with some sandpaper. And uh, I like this knife. That's pretty nice. This red needle nose is all right. It's all right, you know. It's it's all right. It's not it's not a superstar needle nose. I like this one actually. It's got a nice spring return. It's a pretty good size. It's a smaller needle nose. I like these tools, uh, but but this is way too big. I like the smaller ones. I got like a 4.5. Man, I love that one. I love that one. If I don't know where it is, I start getting... <laughs> and uh, these were gone for a while. These are my four center bits. And you're not a real main until you have lost a set of four center bits. Uh, purchased two additional sets of four center bits. To pine and pine and pine for your original set of Harbor Freight $16 for bits and then rediscovered their location. So this morning, I know you guys have seen this. This is a bass amplifier that I built. It's got uh, rechargeable batteries and lovely pastel colors. You plug this in here. You can go in uh, three and a half mil or a quarter inch. And then there's a Marshall style jack. And imitation gold, really gaudy color gold. Nob. Uh, Nobis. 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 When you say knob, you have to think like a, you're an old Hispanic, like old wise, like South American guy, maybe Mexican, but like Nobis. My Nobis. 
So this morning, uh, I'm trying to flip my schedule. I'm all jet laggy, unbelievable back pain, and just like miserable, like hating life, wishing there was some drug I could take to turn me back into a child again where I'm not, my body isn't racked with pain. And I went to bed at midnight. I was all kabam, kabam, kabam. I just could not stay awake all day. And then at 9 o'clock, I was like wide awake, watched Hooper, a Burt Reynolds movie, and then uh, Cannonball. Cannonball Run. And no, I'm not going to start going, <laughs> You already do sometimes. Do I? I do a Burt Reynolds laugh? I don't know, sometimes you do. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, no, I gotta stop doing that. So yeah, I went to bed about midnight, woke up at four, and sometimes when I wake up, I need to make an app. There's just nothing. There's like, if I wake up and I need to make an app, that's demon. I need to make an app. So yeah, it, no, it's not a demon. We made this amp the other day. The stamp is inside. It's got a three and a half and a six point three five mil uh, inputs, and then there's this. And that turns it up. Here's the power switch. Here's the batteries. This is an actually, it's a nice speaker. This, uh, it's got a fancy tweeter with a huge magnet on it. So this one buddies up with a larger speaker that has like a six and a half inch or an eight inch woofer and it gives a lot more bass. But this is for the, our mini micro rig. This is for our mini micro rig to play a bass through it. But I, I, I was like, I want to have a slightly larger diameter speaker. This is like two four and a half inch drivers, maybe. I'm not sure. It sounds good with the bass. This sounds really good. Um, and it's just an amp. There's no EQ or nothing. So today, I, when I woke up, I just started digging around looking for this Altec Lansing subwoofer. Because recently I got an acid box which is a type of cigar box that they're kind of big and boxy and I thought maybe just maybe one of these sub speakers that I got laying around some of them have dual connection like it's a stereo sub and uh, I got some stereo amp boards so it's like that would work perfectly couldn't find the sub speaker but what I did find is the sub itself which is a box and it's got some legs on it so what I did I cut this section out. This section, I used my snips, uh, that orange snips. It was my first favorite tool. This is the tool that I used to completely uh, take this, because this came out and then it had feet on it. And there were big feet in here. So it was a lot of chopping. I, I really screwed up my hand, my wrist, doing that chop, chop. But basically, this amp board used to live in here. Like, it sat, I think. Um, like this and just looking at it and chopping away at it I was like man this is gonna work really good and then when I realized this board is super thick so I try I tried to drill a hole for the switch and the, the even the toggle switch didn't have enough thread for the how deep this board is so what did I do? I went and got this VHS, VHS box and I cut the center strip out of it. That's this here. And I was able to mount everything. You can see I got four, four little fasteners there to hold it in. And then there's an EQ board, which is... Uh, I got this EQ from eBay. It's called Bass Guitar Harness 3 Band EQ Active Pickup. So it's got a 9 volt clip, there's a little box with the circuit, and then there's three pots. Now I had two of these for stereo, and I had removed the pot and then cut in dual pot. So for each unit, like I would take both of the three sets of wires for the low control and solder that onto a dual pot. There's six connections. And it, it worked fine. Then I ended up graduating from those bass guitar EQs, because they're more bass centric, the EQ band, the way that the frequencies are laid out are better for a bass, than what I replaced it with, which is a tone mender, which is a runoff groove guitar, six string guitar EQ that's, I recommend, I love the tone mender EQ. So yeah, I built a dual pair of tone menders and used dual pots, and that's what's in my rack mount amp. 
Gompti has one with the base EQ, so I had a pair of base EQs left over. So I hooked up this base EQ to this amp and we'll go to test it, and I got no audio. And this is going on for like two hours. I'm like, what did I do wrong? And there's no instructions. And I remember there was this goofy thing with an extra wire. On the output, you have a red wire and a black wire and a white wire, and you have to join the red and the, bl red and the black wire. And then that's the ground. And then the white wire is your hot. So I was like flip-flopping stuff, like I was throwing nine volts through the input because I thought I had screwed that up when I labeled because I labeled it. When I when I ripped it out of there, I labeled with masking tape. So eventually what it was, the connector that I was I temped in a temp connector, a quarter inch jack, with this blue and white wire, and it had electrical tape around the base where the wires came into the connector, it was broken in there. PD's homemade little toy tool thing that I made. And like that the first thing I should do, because this has happened to me before with these homemade things, test it. Put your meter and play beep beep cont. So Gonti, if you're listening, please don't sit and tell me stories about how beautiful and wonderful you are. Beep beep cont first and then tell me the story. So yeah, it's got a three band DQ which runs off nine volts. So what I do I was like, oh, I'll put a V-Reg in there. No, nope. you just tap in to off two of the batteries. So there's another wire. There's like a wire here and a wire here. Because it's like positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative. So you end up with a positive here and negative here. Okay. But if you take that positive here and the negative here, you'll end up with 8 volts. So the switch is a dual DPDT. So you have the full 16 volts on one side of the switch and then 8.5 on the other side of the switch. So then you run the one side to the Dubenheimus, the EQ, which wants 9 volts, and the 16 volts goes to the amp board. And the LED had a pre-wired resistor. Now chopping these out, it got a little messy as you can see in here. Um, I was using, I started off with this, you know, it's a little bit chopped up. I started off with this, chaka 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 chaka, and that was going kind of slow, and then I saw this which this one has a little bit more business on. So I got in there with that and made quicker work of it. So the speaker is in here, and this is a, uh, it's a bass amp, is what it is. So the input's back here. Uh, the input comes in, goes to the EQ, and then it goes out to a volume pot that I wired in, which is a 100KA. So the uh, pin one gets the hot side coming out of the EQ. Pin 2 is the output going to the amplifier board. Pin 3 is ground. And I piggyback, piggyback that ground going straight through to the input on the amp board. So it's pretty easy. The amp board has uh, 16 volts coming in. It's fused. The fuse is an internal fuse. And it's a 6 millimeter, but a 5 millimeter works in it. I thought that was kind of funny. But yeah, this the, the hot news of the day is finding these old VCR things and using these as material uh, because I also got this PD's kit. This is so cool. It's little mini saw blades. I can throw them at Kito when he's bad. Uh, and then a, a little chuck guy where you, you unscrew this, you put the saw blade on there and then put the screw in. There's a couple washers. So then that enabled me to dig in and cut some of this stuff. I mean, I was using different tools. I was using my knife. I was using snips and then I tried using this the stupid uh, rip saw thing too but yeah those saws are cool these are even cooler because oftentimes I'm working with wood and it'll be real thick wood and you won't be able to like if you drill a hole through it whatever you're putting through there it won't have enough thread because they don't put like real long threading on the electronics they put it like you're going to mount it through sheet metal so you'll have to cut a larger hole for the thing to sit through like in this case here this is part of the VHS tab here, okay? This is part of this tab cut. And then I just put four. These are kind of bulky. These screws, they don't look that great. As a matter of fact, this one looks like it can go in a little more. But um, basically what you do in this case, you'll drill out these four holes, and then I have a countersink thing to make them like a little chamfered. And then you drill the center hole, like it's best to mark it, and then so you get it right in the center. I didn't do that, so it's off. And then you'll mount your jack to the plate. Okay, once the you have these four holes drilled and the jack is mounted, and this hole in the unit is big enough for it to fit through, 
then you drop it in, and then at that point, you pre-drill your holes for your fasteners, and then it'll all line up and work perfectly. So uh, this thing, it's, it originally was a subwoofer that fired down. Um, th this here, this wood is real thick, and I had to countersink that to get the fasteners through, and then I lost one of the fasteners, and it was in one of my parts bins the whole time. But this is the amount of thread in it. I had, to, I had to remove quite a bit, and then I ended up going into my secret stash of German stainless steel hardware left over from this uh, Audiogram MX-10 mixer, like an old ancient mixing board that I stripped here and kept the hardware, and there's a bunch of fasteners, stainless steel fasteners, that every time they save the day when I can't find it. So I got this nice handle on here. I know it kind of looks like a karaoke machine, and there is a port which the whole thing with this is the fact that this speaker is designed, the frequencies are designed for this enclosure. That they, they, they have software to determine, okay, with this size speaker, you need this size box with this size port. So this is tuned. That's the thing. I could have taken the speaker out and cut a hole and, you know, got a plate out, draw a circle with a pencil around the plate, and then use my jigsaw and stick my tongue out like my brother cut the round hole and then j j j some screws and mount your speaker and Bob's your uncle but you wouldn't sound good because that box is smaller and it's not designed and tuned like there's enough air around this to get this thing to sing and the reason that I really wanted the EQ is because when you're doing an application like this from experience I know you're going to want to cut the high end, the low end a lot this thing is just going to sound way better playing a bass guitar through it if you roll off a lot of the low. So I've got, what, I, what I'm going to do, I've got a cork Pandora. This is kind of neat how this worked out. I had some Velcro on here, so I went ahead and replicated the Velcro. And I made a special cable out of a pair of RCA jacks. So this cable, it's uh, stereo coming out of the Pandora, and then it drops down... Uh, one input going into this amp and the other input swings around and goes to this one. So when we go to the park, depending on how loud we want to get, like if, if Conti needs a little more, well, we can, we, can, we can supply her with a little more because this has got the batteries in it. And I'll go ahead and run this plug around here, which turns that on. We've got the, oh my goodness, I'm playing bass with gloves on. That's not going to work. Actually, I bet I could. I would probably be like Getty V, all full, full four fingers. <clears throat> so yeah, the Korg Pandora has bass and guitar patches on it. It's a PXD5 that I really love. I've never tried the PX4. It's supposed to sound better. Uh, and right now this is just on the, the country on the country patch and it's a little loud. So that's the five and a quarter. Jeez, four and a half. So I let me see if I can find that. I think there's a. Uh, I'm not really prepared to do a big rock and bass demo today.
So you have to kind of excuse the uh, super slop. I'm going to try to find a can hear uh, it's nice to be able to trim off those lows I don't want to disturb my neighbors here but that's the uh, mini rig that we put together the micro rig and uh, the plan with this is to uh, not have the cops come or disturb people, but be able to drag a minimal amount of gear out to, uh, you know, maybe even the patio. I don't know. I don't know. We, we played once here before and somebody called the cops on us at 5 o'clock. And it's almost like rather than have that happen and have me really resent everybody and like scowling like when i see somebody pulling in the drive we'd be like i bet they called Urgh, you know it's almost better that we we don't um, play in this area so the idea behind the micro rig would be like empty could take this and her base and then this could sit in the gig bag and you know maybe that would be enough i don't know we might it almost seems like with this rig Pairing it, pairing it up with the two is the most efficient uh, for sound reinforcement, which is crazy when you're talking about like micro rig, you know, like oh, adding this and adding that. But that's not that much extra stuff to carry. And uh, for me, having good sound is paramount. So uh, I think that, you know the other thing that I, I'm considering, like with all of this, is what the cops are going to see when they walk up because if, if, like the smaller we can make it and like every, anytime we do this stuff Gronky will tell you I'm like crack Hitler I'm like crazy about keeping everything straight not taking more picnic tables than we need not having a bunch of bright colors and dark colors like no pinks or purples it's all like the gig bags are all lined up and minimized and like we hide everything like there'll be a, a bench that you sit on and I'll have all the gig bags lined up under the bench so it's not like we're there and there's everything is spread out I try to conceal the cable so it, it looks nice it looks organized it doesn't look like a big mess and it looks safe because there's just the thing with me, if I walk up and I see a bunch of pink and purple and it's messy, I just get angry. I do not like those pastel colors. I, I, <laughs> and can you can imagine me being here, being the only male, and then like imposing my like insane will upon these poor girls. But yeah, this is the micro rig. Uh, uh, I think this one came out really good. I worked on it for 12 hours today, um, but three hours of those I was on the phone with my new friend Bob. So this was a lot of fun. I think I didn't notice this here. I got to try to take care of that. I don't know. I might peel these stickers off and paint this black. I've got some uh, poster paint that I think will look. I mean, if I could get rid of that, I'd be happy. But. Um, it's a neat looking thing. It looks like something you'd get at Ikea, I think. It doesn't look so much uh, homemade as, as some of the other stuff that I've built. So let me know what you guys think of the micro rig. And you can look forward to seeing, um, you know, like this paired up with another one for the drums. This One of these or both of them is going to be 
we've got these bass. Here's the guitar amp. This is the stereo amp. Um, actually, I think it, it even comes on. Yeah, and then these uh, pair of speakers here are some speakers for the guitar. So uh, that's what I'm talking about with the micro rig. It should be just small enough stuff for us to carry in a couple of trips from the car to whatever little pavilion. And we'll be doing this as soon as it's not so crazy humid here in Chicago. And hopefully um, we won't uh, piss too many people off. It won't be ridiculously loud and we won't have to see the police. That's my main thing is I don't want the cops coming. So what do you think? Pretty cool? All right, thank you guys for joining me on this one. Take care of yourselves, hug your pets, try to stay cool, and peace.